I want to share some thoughts with you as uh, we begin just before we do uh, have this baptism service. I wanted to remind you, around here we realize that our roots are Hebrew. We realize that uh, uh, we, as believers, grew out of genuine biblical Jewish faith. So, reminder, beginning at sundown today, the Jewish people are going to observe what they consider their highest holy day. Uh, it's called Yom Kippur. The Bible calls it the Day of Atonement in our English uh, version. It is the climax of Judaism's uh, high holy days. And from Rosh Hashanah, which was 10 days ago, to Yom Kippur, uh, the, those 10 days are called by the Jewish people um, days of awe because the emphasis during this whole period of time is on what they call penitence, what we would call repentance, uh, what in Hebrew is called teshuva. During this time, there is a practice, begins on uh, Rosh Hashanah, and sometimes even uh, to this very day, a practice called Tashli. And it really is simply this. You've probably seen Jewish people doing this. They go to a body of water, and they cast bread into the water. And they're casting bread into flowing water. And it symbolizes their really superstitious uh, belief that is actually based in the book of Micah, the prophet Micah, chapter 7, verse 19. And here's what it says. He, meaning God, will turn again. He will have compassion on us, meaning the nation of Israel. He will subdue our iniquities or sins. And thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. So they superstitiously symbolize their belief that casting the bread in water symbolizes them being rid of their sin, which, of course, is evidence that it's all about human effort. It's human effort to deal with sin. Let me tell you something about water baptism. Water baptism is not about human effort. Water baptism actually symbolizes God's method of dealing with sin. Not man's method, but God's method of dealing with sin. And baptism symbolizes how God deals with our sin. Today, our theme has been joy. We've been in the book of Philippians. I don't know of anything more joyful than knowing that God has thoroughly dealt with your sin. You talk about being free. The joy of just knowing that you're free from that burden of guilt is amazing. Baptism symbolizes the fact that our God has thoroughly dealt with the sin problem. We all have it. We all have a sin problem. Baptism symbolizes, doesn't do it, but it symbolizes that God has thoroughly dealt with our sin problem. And so I just want to share a few thoughts with you along those lines. Uh, baptism symbolizes sin's forgiveness. Did you know that? Uh, let me, uh, first of all, look in the book of Colossians chapter 2 and listen to these verses 12 and 13. This is not talking about water baptism, but it is talking about spiritual baptism. Let me give you another term for spiritual baptism. Not water, spiritual baptism. Salvation. You're familiar with that term, right? Salvation and spiritual baptism are the same thing. 
When this, when we get saved simultaneous with salvation, the Spirit of God spiritually baptizes us into the body of Christ. Spiritual baptism, all right? Well, baptism symbolizes sin's forgiveness. Here's what it says. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead, and you, being dead in your sin and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened or made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses or sins. So baptism symbolizes sins forgiven. Sins forgiven. Water baptism does not forgive sin. Please understand that clearly. Water baptism, you're going to witness it in a moment, does not forgive sin, but it is a picture of spiritual baptism, which places you into Jesus Christ and identifies you then with the death for sin that Jesus died, making you the recipient of forgiveness of sin that God offers in one way, and that is through Christ alone. God forgives all your sin when you're in Christ. He forgives all your sin so that you have a perfect, and listen, a permanent standing before God. Isn't that wonderful? So baptism symbolizes sins forgiven. But also, baptism symbolizes sins buried did you hear that verse? Buried with him in baptism. And also, I uh, could mention Romans chapter 6 and this uh, third verse, which says very much the same thing. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death. And so baptism symbolizes not only our death with Jesus, but our burial with Jesus, and really symbolizes sin's burial. Water baptism, listen to me, water baptism does not bury your sin, but it is a picture of spiritual baptism, how God removes your sin through your burial with Jesus and all your sin, then, you might say, is buried in the sea of God's forgetfulness. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 17 that people that have been baptized into Christ, people that have been saved, that have received Jesus, God says their sins and their iniquities, which is another word for sin, their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. So baptism, it symbolizes sin's burial. Like when that person is brought up out of the water, it's like a picture, okay, I have in Christ, I've buried my sins. They're gone. And as the song says, in the sea of God's forgetfulness, I will remember their sins against them no more. And then thirdly and finally, very simply, Baptism symbolizes sin's powerlessness. Baptism symbolizes sin's powerlessness. Water baptism, that you're going to witness in a moment, water baptism does nothing to deliver you from sin. But it is a picture of spiritual baptism, which in Christ the believer sees sin as being powerless. What I mean by that is what the Bible means by that, and that is sin no longer wields uncontested and unchallenged power over the believer. Baptism symbolizes that sin has been made powerless in the believer's life. Listen to these verses. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, notice it doesn't say that sin is dead, but it says that if 
you are saved. You died with Christ. You're freed from sin. That is, it's uncontested, unchallenged power over you. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, in the same manner, reckon, or calculated to be so, reckon you yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What is he saying? He's saying that if you have undergone spiritual baptism, you have been baptized into Christ, you, you have identified with Christ in his death for you, his burial for you, his resurrection for you, that you also then have been set free from the mastery, from the overpowering, from the unchallenged, uncontested power of sin in your life. The power of sin has been snapped, has been severed in the life of a believer. Again, I remind you, sin is not killed, sin is not dead, but now you can defeat sin. You're not a victim. You're not a helpless victim of sin in your life. Now you have the power to choose not to sin by depending on the power of Christ in you. The problem is this. When sin is not dealt with God's way, the Bible way, when we just cast our bread in the water, so to speak, cast it to the wind, when we just cast our, when we deal, don't deal God's way with our sin, it floats around, it blows around, and it constantly shows up at other times in other places. Have you ever found on uh, maybe uh, a seashore a bottle with a note in it? I remember finding one one time. I don't remember what we, what it said, but it was a uh, it was from far away. I read recently about someone, I think it is the Jersey Shore, that found a bottle with a note in it from someone in Europe, and how long it took to get there, I don't recall. But um, you know, when you don't deal with sin God's way. It's like that note in a bottle. You, you just toss it in the ocean. It's, it's going to show up again. It's going to come back to haunt you. It, it, you're going to find it at another time in another place if you don't deal with sin God's way. Baptism symbolizes the right way to deal with sin. Water baptism illustrates God's way, the right way of taking care of sin. So, how is sin forgiven? Not by self-effort, not by human merit. You know, salvation that the Bible offers is totally the opposite of, of other religions. Other religions, you have to do a whole bunch of things, whatever the list might be, in order to merit a place with God or whatever. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that forgiveness of sin is not something that you get by self-effort, something you can merit, something you can earn, but it is something that God himself, as man's sinless substitute, provides forgiveness, and he forgives, and he forgives completely, and God forgives forever. Furthermore, when God forgives sin, he doesn't leave us in its power. But as we've said, he provides deliverance, but you have to claim it. And when you fail to claim it, uh, you don't know what freedom really is that he offers. And when you fail to claim it and you sin, you know what he does? He says, if you will own it, if you will own up to it, if you will confess your sin, if you will agree with what I say about it, you know what I'll do? I'll forgive that sin. 
and I'll cleanse it. I'll wash you clean as if it never even existed if you confess. So baptism pictures God's way of dealing with sin. It doesn't eliminate sin. Water baptism doesn't, but it pictures it. It's a great illustration of the wonderful salvation that deals thoroughly and adequately with our sin. 